It is called mifepristone, and it stops the production of a hormone necessary for pregnancy. And it is one of two drugs typically used in medication abortions. As of 2022, more than 54% of abortions in the U.S. happen with these pills, not surgery. And that percentage has likely increased in the months since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. Perhaps for that reason, conservative groups have been targeting mifepristone since the Dobbs decision last summer. That little pill, which is barely bigger than an aspirin, is the new frontier of the fight over abortion access in this country. Already, 18 states have established restrictions on the pills, with some trying to cut off male access to the drug and others threatening the pharmacists who provide the medication. But as soon as tomorrow, a federal judge in Texas, one appointed by former President Donald Trump, could make a decision that would upend access, access to mifepristone nationwide, which means nationwide. And that includes blue states like California and New York. It includes states that have recently enshrined access to abortions in their state constitutions, like Michigan and Vermont. No matter where you live, this could impact you. A conservative group called Alliance Defending Freedom, which, by the way, the Southern Poverty Law Center considers a hate group, that group brought a case against the FDA in November to challenge the agency's approval of mifepristone, which, again, happened 20 years ago. The group claims that the FDA lacked the authority to approve the drug and did not adequately study its safety and efficacy. The Alliance Defending Freedom wants Judge Kazmarek to issue a preliminary injunction effectively blocking all access to mifepristone and revoking the FDA's approval of it. Tomorrow is a deadline for briefs from the plaintiff and the FDA. Once those briefs are in, Judge Kazmara could make the decision to block access to mifepristone swiftly, as soon as tomorrow. If Judge Kazmara does decide to block the use of this drug, the Biden administration is expected to quickly file an appeal. But even then, this case is expected to rapidly work its way up to the conservative, row-ending Supreme Court. Joining us now is Nancy Northup, president and CEO of the Center for Reproductive Rights. Nancy, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for following this important story. It is. I mean, this is literally a, a five alarm fire if you care about women's reproductive freedoms. Um, and the fact that it is applicable nationwide, right? We're talking about the, the, the sort of choice, the form of abortion that most women choose could be not available to people all over this country. How likely do you think it is that we will get a ruling on this tomorrow? And what is your level of optimism here? Well, let's just start by, I'm sure your listeners are saying, how is it even possible that this could ban medication abortion nationwide? And it's because, as you pointed out in your opening, they have said that the FDA approval back over 22 years ago was not Correct. And of course, that is fundamentally wrong. Mm -hmm. The science and the facts support it. So it's a baseless lawsuit. But why are we on high alert? Why are you on high alert? Because they filed the lawsuit before a judge. They shopped the forum in Amarillo, Texas, yeah. before a judge who has a very anti-abortion, anti-contraception record. So the concern is that he could well rule that the FDA, although, again, baseless, that the FDA should not approve this, which would mean that he might enjoin its use across the nation. So we are of heightened concern about that. But again, your listeners should know that medication abortion is safe and effective. 22 years plus, over 5 million women in the United States have used medication abortion. As you pointed out, it is the method of choice for most people in the United States. What, I mean, what is the recourse here? So the Biden administration is likely to file an appeal. Absolutely. But if there is not a stay on the injunction, right, this freezes access to mifepristone across the country. There could be women who need abortions in the next days, weeks. I mean, what recourse do they have in a moment like this? Well, right. So first of all, it would create chaos. Of course, clinics across the nation, they're following this. Uh, and they're thinking about what their options are and looking at that. And we have to see what the ruling would be. But, of course, it would create more crisis on top of the crisis that's already happening because many people are accessing medication abortion. The FDA has also found it to be safe and effective by telemedicine. So, you know, if all of a sudden clinics have to switch from people doing telemedicine medication abortion, safe and effective at home, to having to come in for a surgical abortion, that changes entirely the access framework. So it is hugely problematic. And again, it shows that the ultimate goal was never, as the Supreme Court said, 
Roe versus Wade is overturned, we're sending it back to states to decide. No, no, no. The ultimate goal is to ban it for everyone nationwide. So, what, I mean, what should women do who are, or people who need abortions, right, need access to mifepristone and think they're, maybe they live in a state where they can't gain access to a surgical abortion. What do they do right now? I mean, what is the, what is the, what, what do you advise people who are alarmed? They're just finding this out. Do they call their doctors? I mean, yes. I mean, the first thing, no matter what the court rules, if people have an abortion scheduled, if they had a telehealth visit, if they were going to get medication abortion, call your clinic first, right? Find out first what is happening. Don't assume that you know. Don't assume that because you saw a news show that maybe, you know, you're ready to take action on your own. Go ahead and look at that. And then also look at other, you know, credible resources, all the nonprofit organizations and Planned Parenthoods and independent clinics and abortion funds and all the places that you can get information. The New York Attorney General has information on her website. All those reliable places. But try to get the information information first. Don't just assume. This is, I mean, it's very hard. I think because not enough attention has been paid to this issue, it is hard to fathom what could be on our doorstep literally in the next 24 hours and the chaos that they could, as you say, layer on top what is already an unacceptable situation as far as women's access to reproductive freedoms.